Welcome to this broadcast of the worship service of Unity Christian Reformed Church and First Christian Reformed Church. If you attempted to watch this broadcast live Sunday, uh, you'll notice that we had a few technical glitches and uh, our internet service was lagging a little bit here at the church. But we thank you for coming back uh, to tune into this broadcast. We are so glad that you've connected with us and we pray that this service is a blessing to you and an encouragement to you today. God bless
So heaven is real and death is a lie. I wanna hear voices of angels above singing as one. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou hast been, not for ever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new 
to be Well, good morning. Isn't live technology great? So glad for you to join with us. Sorry about that. We got the mics up and running, and I just want to say again, good morning. Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ, to this broadcast this morning. Uh, welcome to those of you watching on YouTube this morning. So glad to have you join with us as you watch this broadcast. We also want to uh, welcome the radio audience on KDJS Radio this morning, uh, part of our partner broadcast this morning with our sister church, First Christian Reformed Church here in Prinsburg. A warm welcome to all of you viewing and listening this morning. As we gather for worship this way in virtually, I want to share with you the scriptures this morning from Psalm 121, where it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? The good news is my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And it's in view of that good news this morning, we are gathered for worship in this way. It's our desire to seek the heart of God this morning, to hear his voice, to worship together in song and in word. As we prepare our hearts to do that, would you join me in prayer this morning? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence uh, all across the land today, uh, everywhere where your people are gathered in uh, long-term care, long care facilities, in homes and living rooms, traveling today, wherever your people are assembled today, Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit to rest on each person. And through the power of your Holy Spirit to knit our hearts together, to worship together, to seek your face. And Lord, I pray in this time of worship together in this way, Lord, that your spirit will lead us. That your grace and your mercy and peace would fall fresh on us. We pray this in the powerful and precious name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all
Shall reside. 
I hope you were blessed by that recording. It's a unique recording where a group out of Nashville called 10 to 6 Music Group, a, a group of 31 backup singers in Nashville, uh, recorded their voices separately, and it was put together in that rendition of It Is Well. Powerful song, but a powerful image for us as believers today to recognize that even though we are separated by distance and uh, a lot of us are in shelter in home and shelter in place uh, uh, under that uh, provision in our communities, we can still find ways uh, to connect together. So we thank the 10 to 6 Music Group out of Nashville for providing that recording this morning. For those of you who are uh, on the internet this morning and uh, uh, watching this broadcast, you're noticing maybe a little bit of buffering. It seems like a lot of people are on the internet here in our community. And so uh, thank you for being patient with us as uh, this recording will, uh, and this service will be uploaded uh, in its entirety uh, by the end of the day and uh, allow you an opportunity possibly to listen again uh, to all of this. But uh, we are are grateful that you uh, are connected in this way. We are grateful to be able to come together in this way. And uh, this morning's uh, broadcast to you is a, a collaborative effort between the two churches here in Prinsburg, both Unity and First Christian Reformed Church. And uh, we are so glad to have all of you connected in this way. As a community of believers, we also have a shared heart uh, for the people of our community, the people of our faith fellowship. And uh, so we're going to pray now, but uh, we want to invite all of you to uh, lift up your hearts. Would you join us in in praying for a number of people uh, from our community. Wonderful couple, Larry and Lynn, are um, facing some challenges as some uh, tests have come back uh, uh, with some disconcerting results. And so would you uh, remember Larry and Lynn in your prayers uh, this week? Also remember our brother Melvin. Uh, he had a, a kidney stone removed this week. So would you remember him in prayer? Uh, also want to remember Jeff from our community as he continues to press on and press forward uh, through the therapy uh, that he's going through. Would you remember him? Remember Randy as well as he battles uh, against uh, the uh, liver uh, challenges he's facing. Uh, also in our community, we're hoping, Lord willing, come this summer to have a vacation Bible school here in the community, and uh, we'd love to have your help for that. If you'd like to be a part of that, uh, just contact uh, one of the churches and we'll get you connected to help out with that. And as we minister together as churches in this community, uh, we value uh, the faith community and we want to lift up our brothers and sisters at First Church uh, here in town as they continue their search for a pastor as uh, the one they were seeking has uh, just discerned to stay put where he's at at this time and uh, their search process continues. So please remember them in your prayers as well. Would you take a few moments and pray with me as we lift all of of this up to God and lift each other up in prayer. Father, we pray this morning as uh, your people gathered virtually, but gathered together in one in spirit and purpose to, to honor you, to worship you, to lift up our voices before you, and to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we're living in a, a very bizarre day as believers, as we're uh, living under a, a pandemic and uh, dealing with crisis in our land. And it's not just health crisis, but Lord, there's challenges economically, there's challenges socially, there's challenges when it comes to schooling and all of that, Lord. And we lift this up to you, Lord. We uh, sometimes struggle in crisis. There's, there's fear there's anxiety, and we know that we can come to you in prayer uh, and lift this up to you, knowing that as we cast our cares on you, you care for us, that you love us. So we thank you, and in that confidence and that hope, we come to you this morning, lifting up our brothers and sisters in Christ that uh, have just been uh, spoken of, Lord, uh, from our faith community here in this area. Lord, we love them, and, and Lord, we just ask in Jesus' name, 
that you will draw yourself close to them. In fact, today, Lord, we pray that you will draw yourself close to all those that are suffering today. Lord, not just in this area, but Lord, all across our land, across the globe, so many are being touched by uh, this health crisis and the economics and the pressures that come with this pandemic. Lord, we are trusting you. We are believing you to put an end to this pandemic, that Lord, you will intervene. You will come and you will heal Lord, we implore you by your grace and your mercy to come and visit your people, that your hand would be gracious and merciful towards your people today, all around the globe, and not just with this pandemic crisis, Lord, but we pray for all those all around the world today, bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, and we thank you, Lord, for the power of the good news to transform lives. And we see that happening all around the world. So today, Lord, we, we surrender everything to you. We surrender our heart, soul, mind, and strength to you. To see your kingdom come and your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray these things in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
just a powerful reminder again that the best place we can be, uh, especially in the midst of crisis, is in a place of surrender. And so I invite you to do that as we now enter into a, a time in the Word. And if you have a Bible near you or close to you, I invite you to open that up to the New Testament, to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, this book uh, represents a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. And uh, he had a, a fondness for this church and loved the, the people of this church, but also knew that uh, they were facing uh, persecution. They were facing pressure. And uh, these words are words of encouragement uh, to keep pressing on. And it's in that spirit and that light this morning, I want to share a few verses from uh, beginning in chapter 4, uh, verse 25, and continuing through uh, verse 2 of chapter 5. And again, if you have your Bibles open, would love to invite you to follow along with me as we consider these uh, powerful words of encouragement for all of us as um, we live uh, to honor Christ in all things. Would you join me in the word this morning? First of all, beginning at verse 25. Brothers and sisters, therefore, let's put away falsehood. Each one of you should speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Well, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one, and heart, one another. Be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering, and sacrifice to God. Powerful words of encouragement to us this morning from Ephesians 4. We just pray God's blessing on the word together. This morning, I want to talk about uh, the, the call to keep loving. Keep loving, in, especially in the middle of crisis. This past week, I was struck as I was watching the evening news, and, and if you know me, you know I'm a, a news buff, and so I've been certainly watching the news across the networks as this pandemic continues to impact the globe. And I, one of the newscasts, we got towards the end of the newscast, and the feature was entitled, And There's Good News. And it was a great story about places all across the United States that are coming together, even though we social distance, a coming together to support and encourage. There was a, a picture of a, a, a small community where teachers got in cars and paraded through town with signs communicating to their kids, we love you, we miss you. Uh, there was one community, and, and I've seen this across the globe, actually, uh, a community that knew the, the street a, a particular nurse traveled on her way to the hospital. And one time they all came out and, and from their windows and cars started honking horns and clapping and cheering as this nurse made her way to the hospital. And we're seeing more and more of these kinds of stories appear. And let's admit in the middle of a crisis, it's good to hear good news. It does something for us. But I think it's also a, a visible reminder that crisis takes a toll on us. 
This past week, I reflected a bit and, and had the opportunity to uh, listen to uh, a live web stream of Dr. Henry Cloud, and he talked about how it is that our brains uh, are wired and how we process crisis. And one of the things about crisis is that we discover how much our brains and, and all the connectivity of our brains is really set up to bring us calm. Such that when crisis happens, there's a lot of misfiring, there's a lot of disconnect, there's a lot of adjusting that happens, and we feel a bit of anxiety. We feel a bit of fear. And it's the brain's way and our body's way of redirecting or trying to bring us back to the place of calm. And for each one of us, that's different. We're trying to make our way back to that place where we have some semblance of routine, some semblance of peace or a stable ground to, to stand on. Why is that? Why did God set us up this way? Why did God wire us to be in that place of peace? And then really kind of wire us to deal with crisis in a certain way. And as you reflect on that, I think one of the things that maybe bothers us as believers especially is, why is it that sometimes we struggle in crisis or even, even get to the point where we experience fatigue and exhaustion? Or maybe we get short with one another. Or we get tense or, or panicky or even fed up at times. Maybe discouraged. Certainly, you know, if we spend a, 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 an extra amount of time on social media or news, even that can, can start to make us a bit raw with one another. That's why I feel led to, to take us to Ephesians this morning for a little while, just to reflect on how do we keep loving? There's that old 1980s song by Hall and Oates, uh, you've lost that loving feeling. Why, why is it that we lose that loving feeling? Why is it that, especially in crisis, Yes, we see these beautiful expressions of, of love and generosity, but why is it that those fade after a while? Why is it that we suddenly don't have that loving feeling? Maybe you're experiencing a little bit of that in your own homes or as you're sheltering down and, and having uh, a lot of together time in your home and you're trying to find your way through that, and that can be tough too. Or being absent from one another and discovering how important those relationships are and feeling a bit of angst towards that. How do you keep loving in crisis? Paul's word to the church in Ephesus had that tone to it. Hey, believers, I know it's tough. Here's how we keep going. But to understand this message that Paul is giving we have to go back a couple chapters to find out what drives, what drives that uh, loving feeling towards one another. And, and to understand that, we need to understand that that strength and resolve to love rests not in the determination of will. Because that runs out. Let's, let's admit, you know, we can, for a period of time, we can push through and, and, and we can do those acts of generosity. We can love others. We can do acts of kindness. But after a while, even the determination of our will gets tired or maybe even bitter at times because we keep doing and keep doing and keep doing. And the longer crisis goes, the harder it is. But Paul understands, is going to teach us this morning from God's word, that it's not the determination of will that pushes us through crisis ultimately. But it is the deliverance of our soul that has come to us that makes it possible to keep loving. And to understand this, we need to go back a couple chapters. Go back with me to chapter 2. Uh, beginning at verse 8. And those are familiar words to many of us. Powerful words. 
You know, we've been saved by grace through faith. And this is not your own doing. Paul recognizes that if we're going to experience not only the deliverance that comes through salvation, but a kind of persistent sense of deliverance, we need to recognize this whole thing of grace starts outside us. It, it isn't because we've got it all figured out and, and we have some determination of will to somehow make it through and fix our problems on our own. No, grace reminds us that it all starts outside us. It starts with God, the one who embodies perfect love. And he demonstrated that perfect love by coming to us and saving us. But note where Paul goes with this. Yes, it's by grace you've been saved. By faith, this not of your own doing. It's a gift of God. But then he goes on to say, but we've been created to do good. So what grace does from the hand of God, that perfect love coming to us, empowers us, sets us free to do good, to keep loving. So the real key here to understanding loving one another, to press on, is the fact that it starts with God's grace. It starts with his persistence in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, through that grace is how we keep loving. So if you go back to where we started in chapter 4, verse 25, I want to lay out for you seven ways we keep loving. Seven ways that the Apostle Paul reminds us that in view of the grace of we've received, we are able to keep loving, especially in times of crisis, especially when we come to the end of ourselves. That's why the best place we can be before God is fully surrender. It's not my will. It's not my determination. It's not my resolve that ultimately drives loving. It is God's grace to me that empowers me to love. So let's look at the seven ways Paul lays out for us to keep loving one another. Here's the first one. We keep loving by speaking the truth since we're all in this together. We're in this together. You know, it's, it's interesting as you watch crisis, especially if it lingers, if it goes for a long period of time, and this particular crisis looks to be with us for a while. You, you're already seeing hints of it in, in the news broadcasts. You're seeing kind of a, a picking on one another, a, a nagging, a irritability as we're moving forward. People starting to allow to surface um, bitterness or fault finding. And it, and it begins to divide. It begins to, to, to uh, uh, pierce the love that's attempting to hold us together. And what we forget is that God's grace, God holds out his grace to all of us. And to those who believe, especially those who've been saved by his grace, when we choose to speak the truth, when we speak clarity, and, and, and when we speak encouragement to one another, we acknowledge the fact that, look, we're in this together. There should be no dividing. There should be no bickering. There, and we're going to get to that a little bit later in this text. But when we choose to speak the truth in love, in view of this grace, because grace acknowledges the value of one another. Grace recognizes that no one person is more deserving than another to receive God's love and his grace. God is generous in that way. 
and he comes to us with that love. He's no, you know, he doesn't favor one person over another. And that grace is a reminder to all of us, we're in this together. Let's speak the truth, but let's value one another. Let's hold each other together by speaking the truth, speaking encouragement to one another. The second thing, the second way we keep loving, and this is, this is a key one. And that second way is this, by refusing to harbor ill towards one another. One of the things about crisis is that it brings a level of toxicity to the culture. In other words, crisis, again, disturbs the, that inner working of our body, our wiring, and disrupts shalom. It disrupts our calm. But what happens is, is in that disrupting, if we harbor ill, in other words, if, if I continue to be mad towards what's going on in the world, if I allow the toxicity of, of a pandemic and its impact on, on people's health, or we look at that death rate and we become deeply disturbed by it, and we allow that to gnaw in us, we can become toxic ourselves, and it becomes very easy to harbor ill towards one another. The scripture says, yes, you can be angry. You can be angry at what this has done to, to the flow and routine of culture. You can be angry about the economic impacts. And, and yes, you can be angry about how it, it, it is taking people's lives and livelihoods. You can be angry about that. But the scripture says, don't sin in that. In other words, don't allow it to eat you alive. Don't harbor it. Don't hold on to it. In other words, don't go looking for it. And then once you experience, hold on to it. You need to surrender that. Grace empowers us to forgive one another, to release each other, and to be fully surrendered and release ourselves before God. I encourage you, if, if this is really starting to wear on you, this, this whole pandemic, if it's starting to wear on you, I encourage you, take a moment right now even to pause before God and say, God, I give this, I release this. And, and that neighbor, that friend that said that really stupid thing to me, I release them right now. I forgive and you will find a release that takes place in your soul. And the scripture says, then you don't give the opportunity to the devil to come in and make holy havoc in your life. But you allow the grace and the shalom that comes with God's grace to speak powerfully into you. Don't harbor ill. Speak forgiveness. The same forgiveness shown us in Christ Jesus. The third thing is this. Keep loving by redeeming the brokenness. I love the illustration that Paul gives here. He says, you know, let the thief no longer steal, verse 28, but rather let him labor doing honest work. In other words, find ways to take the mess, the brokenness, and redeem it. I mean, think about what Christ did at the cross. He came, he died for us. And through the shedding of his blood, the giving of his life, he took something that the sin, the evil of this world, he took it and as sin and evil pressed in, as it were to snuff him out, his perfect love overpowered sin. It overpowered the darkness. It defeated the darkness. That same love has been shown to us. And that same love now resides in us. The kind of love that looks at the darkness and overpowers it. Looks at the brokenness of our world and says, we can do better. We can change that. And, and the selfless love that comes from Christ makes that possible. So when we see the grace that's been shown us in Christ Jesus, the grace that has changed us, that same grace is able to change the world around us. And man, when you live in crisis, when we're together in this crisis right now, we can use that. 
That's, that's a little bit of that flavor of that there's good news in this world, those, those news highlights of things being done right in this world. It, it speaks to the power of redeeming the times, especially in times of darkness. Grace empowers us. It, it, it operates with this, this redemptive power. Grace can come in and change the darkest of circumstances and bring light in life. Our world needs that today. We all need that in the middle of crisis. And we need to be reminded that's exactly what Christ did. He came in our darkness. He came into our brokenness and saved us and set us free. The fourth thing is this. Keep loving by building up grace-touched lives, giving room to grow. It kind of speaks to what we said earlier about, hey, we're in this together. Let's not tear each other down. Let's build each other up. That's how we navigate crisis. That's how we keep loving one another is when we engage in those things that build each other up. Something changes in us. When we allow the grace of God to change us and then in turn, we show that love to one another. Yes, it redeems the times, but it begins to change us to the brokenness, the darkness, the toxicity that sometimes hides in us begins to fade. It dies and, and there's a brightness, a countenance about us that rises up. Why? Because the love of God is shaping how we love one another. And when we allow that to happen to us through the Holy Spirit, we're less toxic with each other, we're more forgiving with one another, and we find ways through how we speak and live to build each other up. And I encourage you, as you look across the landscape of your community, uh, as you look across the, the, the landscape of the globe where the brokenness is, is being felt deeply, love. Just go in there and build people up. And when you do that, there's a sense of that connectedness, that togetherness that can change a culture. Because grace reminds us that God through Jesus Christ raises the dead to life. I mean, if, the, if grace represents that, that means deadness in us is coming to life. And through that grace, we can bring Life to where things are dead in this world, where things are dying in this world, where people's hope is wavering, where, where the, uh, the, the peace is faltering. We can speak life by building each other up. The fifth thing, uh, real simply, is this. Keep loving by aligning daily with God's Spirit. The beautiful thing about walking close to God is that he has given us his Holy Spirit in us to know what his word is, to understand it. But when we align with it, the spirit confirms and empowers us to go out and love, to forgive, to show grace. It's when we stop listening to the word, when we stop listening to the Holy Spirit, that is when we grieve the Holy Spirit. That's when we grieve the invitation of God to walk close with him. If you want to find your way through crisis, to, to find your way to, to, to have that resolve to press through a pandemic and all the fear and anxiety that comes with it, listen to his spirit. Listen to to his word, because grace increases our capacity to hear well from God. In our sin, we rebel. We don't hear well from God. But when we allow his grace and love close, we hear his spirit. We hear what the word says, and we find our way to love and forgive one another. The sixth thing is this. Two left here. The second to last thing is this. Keep loving by refusing to accept toxicity and engage in selflessness. I have found the best thing that does my spirit a lot of good is going out of my way to do something for someone else. And the reason for that, that is core to the love shown us in Christ Jesus. At the core of that love 
is selflessness. And when we live in selflessness, when we live in, in engaging that, the, the sour air around us begins to fade. It has less of effect on us. We can build up and breathe life where there's brokenness when we are selfless. Pride clouds our vision to see clearly. Pride clouds our ability to hear well from God. But when his grace and love take hold in us, we are able to be selfless towards one another. In fact, grace grants us eyes to see each other differently. We see each other as God's children, experiencing his love and showing that love to one another. It's a whole lot easier in the middle of crisis to love and keep loving when we're reminded that God loves us, even in our mess, even in the brokenness, he shows us his grace. Well, the last thing I want to share with you is this. Keep loving by engaging in selflessness for one another, revealing that we belong to Christ. So as we engage in that selflessness, as we are imitators of God, as verse 1 says, we are able to walk in love just as Christ showed us. It, it tells the world that our motivation is not anything that, that's in it for us. But it reveals that Christ lives in us. It points to Christ. If there is anything about crisis, it, it's very easy for our focus to zero in on the brokenness and the chaos and the, and the evil at times that manifests in the middle of crisis. But if we walk close to God, people see Christ, not crisis. And if they see Christ, we know in Christ there is hope, there is life, there is love, there is resurrection. Selfishness is kept at bay. Christ is the focus. My encouragement to all of you, keep Christ the focus. Keep zeroing in on him. Allow his love and his grace to shape you. And in turn, let it shape how you keep loving one another. Don't let that loving feeling die. Keep loving. God has shown his love to you. Let's agree to keep loving one another. Would you pray with me for a moment? Father, I pray right now that you would stir in us a deep love for one another. But as we do so, let it not be about us and what we get out of it. But let our eyes firmly fix on Christ right now. May we see Christ hanging on the cross. May we see the, the, the passion and the love he showed us by giving his life for us. And may we see the power of that love as he took on our sin and brokenness. He died, but he also rose again. That there is life, there is hope. May that be our focus today and always into the weeks ahead as we navigate crisis and reveal Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Indeed, what a powerful, powerful name the name of Jesus is. And that name goes before you this week. And I pray God's peace to you this week. And I pray that loving feeling that comes from the grace of God would drive you in, in all that you do. Grace and peace to all of you this week. God go before you in the precious, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the 